Hello, I'd like to welcome to you to a concept review module on scale, and it's the meanings of scale as used in geospatial technology. I'm Ann Johnson, Associate Director of the Geotech Center, a national science funded grant to empower colleges and grow the workforce. Scale, while geospatial technology has many unique terms, I think few of them have as many meanings or diverse meanings as the word scale. It's really important to understand what scale you're talking about in relation to the geospatial application, especially if you're going to take an exam about your uh, geospatial knowledge. This concept module will review multiple definitions for the term and provide context in understanding the use of this term in relation to geospatial technology. So scale or scales, you know, some context needs to be uh, included in order to really have a, a, the correct definition. I mean, there are some things like, such as music we have in music, the C scale, the F scale and other scales. Um, model railroads and model cars has a scale model. So we take an object and what it represents and scale it to some factor. It can be part of a fish or a snake. It can be to climb a mountain. And of course, it is a instrument to weigh things. In business, it gets a little bit confusing with the terms in geospatial technology. Uh, business can say you're going to scale up your project or scale down your project, meaning you're going to expand it or contract it from what you initially said. And it can also be in reference to its size. So is it a large scale or a small scale project? And what does that mean exactly? It's interesting that ESRI's dictionary has a reference to scale. It's in reference to double precision, the number of digits to the right of a decimal point and a number. For example, the number 56.78 has a scale of two. And there are many more meanings for the word scale. In geospatial technology, both historically and to the present, scale has been used. It really uh, most often refers to how the distance on a map relates to the distance in the real world. And in the past where we used mainly paper maps that didn't uh, allow you to change scale easily anyway, you may Xerox it and it would change its scale a bit. There would be a bar scale, a ratio scale, or a verbal scale. Bar scales are generally just a, a, a line or some sort of graphic that has markers on it that shows the distance on the map versus some numeric value on in the real world. The first one is uh, shown here is using kilometers. The second one is using miles. It can also be a ratio scale. So you'll see one colon to some number. It really means a fraction one to 100,000. So one on the map is equal to 100,000 in the real world. Verbal scale, uh, that one is commonly used. It'll say something like one inch per mile or one centimeter meter per kilometer. With web maps though, and where we're accessing data online and in various mapping applications, things have changed to how users view and combine data. Zooming in and out can change the view, but usually not the underlying data scale. You know, cities starting off on one map at one scale at small scale do not generally change to very detailed maps as you zoom in. Data created for that small scale or global map generally do not have enough detail to be validly used at a larger scale. Data downloaded from the web should have its metadata and its scale documented, and you should take a look at it before you use it. If you need more information about metadata concepts, there is a concept module on that pro, uh, term. Scale, large or small. And these, this, this term has always been confusing to everyone, and I still have to think about it. It's used to suggest the amount of detail relative to the extent or area of a map. So a large scale map shows a lot of detail or a lot of features in a very limited aerial extent. So a um, good example is a map of a neighborhood or a small town. Small scale, on the other hand, has a small amount of details or features 
covering a very large aerial extent. So a map of the North American continent or the world globe is an example. It can also be used in refer reference to the relative size of a study area. So if you're talking about landscape scale or global scale projects, when maps are online, vector tiles can also include a scale factor setting the extent of those tiles. There's really no firm division between large, medium, and small scale. And this is just from a, a Wikipedia site looking at large scales where you're uh, one to zero or one to 600,000. And, and really the one to some very small quantity, you could be looking at a virus or an atom. But generally, a walking map of a town would be one to 5,000. Medium scale, map of a country. Small scale, one to two million to infinity. So here we could look at maps of uh, global scale, even galaxy scale. This is a really interesting uh, video from the Ordnance Survey. The link to this YouTube is on the bottom of the slide. It compares large scale to small scale maps. And here we start with a small scale map and you can see cities are just dots and very little detail. As we go into more uh, medium uh, scale, we begin to see more and more detail and then into actually a very nice medium, probably scale uh, representation of a city with roads and streets continuing to increase to large scale, and finally, very detailed large scale maps. So this is a good way of thinking about small scale to large scale. Another way to remember what large scale versus small scale maps mean is to think about it as a fraction. Uh, large scale maps, we showed that it was a one to zero to one to 600,000. But if we think about a large scale map of say one to 2400, it's really a fraction, one to 2400 parts. Medium scale then, we can think about it as also a fraction. And here the example is one to 600,000. And small scale, we're getting up to those two million. And as a fraction, it's one to two million. So the largest fraction is one to 2400. The smallest fraction is one to two million. And here is another way to think about and remember large scale versus small scale maps. Data and its collection or creation is also important to understand what scale can do. So when it's collected, it should be part of its metadata, what scale it was collected at. Example on the right shows a stream created at two different scales. The blue stream is very detailed scale with lots of vertices at uh, showing all of the different bends of the river. The red stream was collected for use in a small scale map and its bends are just really generalized, many fewer vertices. Use of data for projects should be uh, aware of both the scale at which it was created and the amount of detail and also what is appropriate for the project uh, the data will be used in. So scale can be uh, a technology, a, a tool, a resolution. We talked about different scales as a tool or a map legend item, a bar, ratio, or verbal scale. It can be a resolution of the data. It needs to be appropriate for the intended application and documented, and it should map the needs of the project and the analysis that's going to be undertaken. You know, if you're looking at global issues, one scale is appropriate all the way down to local or neighborhoods, uh, large scale maps, what should be uh, the scale. Also, when comparing map visualizations from analysis at two different scales, look at the modifiable area unit problem. You know, aggregating data based on different aerial extents and scales, such as either by county, state, country, or continent, can result in very different conclusions, even though the data set's values do not change. This is a visual example of the modifiable area unit problem. So again, it's the same exact date, but the extent 
at which the scales are shown is different. So in one case on the left, it's by state, in the middle it's by county, and by, on the right it's by census tract. Each of these might give the person visualizing and re reviewing this data visually a very different impression of what the data means. See the Geotech website, which is geotechcenter.org, for additional concept modules. And also, we're hoping to uh, create quizzes on the concept module topic and badges. If you need more detailed map we, uh, help, we also have model courses with various topics in them. Thank you.